Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations, and in this video we are designing and crafting a, well I guess I've already, I've already designed it, it's a, a necklace, it, this could also be a circlet, but I'm hoping that the process that I share with y'all here can be used for whatever craftiness, for whatever craftiness you're up to. So, um, all of the tools and materials that um, I'm using will be down in the video description below. I'd show them to you now, but I'm not entirely certain what all it's going to take. So I'm just going to introduce the stuff to you as we go. So we are beginning with one of the Labradorite cabochons that we sell on our website, Back to Earth Creations. Shameless self-promotion. And we have added a groove to it. I'm sure that you can modify this and I'll explain to you how as we go um, to not need a groove. There are ways of going about doing that but I just absolutely love our groovy cabs and the, with this design I think it will lend itself really nicely to years and years and years of long wear and tear and use on this uh, on this piece. So we're going to begin, and I, before I explain all of this, I'm just going to kind of show piece by, well, I guess I should explain it first, shouldn't I? That'd make a little bit more sense. So here in the center is the stone with a chainmail bezel, and then I'm going to be a, doing a two-wire, five two-beat weave. So it's like, well, there'll be ten on this point here where it's bent, but it'll be like weave five around one, two around both, five around one, two around both, and I'll explain all of this as we go. This outermost wire will terminate in a beautiful little spiral, hopefully, um, that's going to be hammered, and that's going to be happening on both sides. This second wire is going to be terminated, whoop, you'll see it follows there, we've got a loop, we've got a spiral, and all of this is going to be woven to the chain mail along, like, uh, as it goes, and that's again happening on both sides. Um... Now I'm experiencing a complication because I kind of changed the design a little bit. So we're going to be adding in a third wire, I think, here around our piece. So that way, um, the third wire, the one innermost that is not pictured, but will be there, comes up and over and ends there. And then we're adding in a fourth piece of wire across the top here. All of the wire that I'm using is a solid 16 gauge. Um, this does tarnish. You could use the non-tarnish, but I'm going to be doing some torch work and I'm going to be doing some hammering and different things. Um, so that's why I'm going with the bare copper. But then I'm going to be wrapping it in a copper core silver plated uh, non-tarnish wire. Uh, the uh, the person I'm making this for, I don't want it to ever have to be like polished or it won't be tarnishing or anything. So other than the little bit of bare copper that will be showing, uh, all of it's going to be this titanium toned. I'm also going to be including possibly a little faceted bicone crystal bead up here at the top. I have it drawn with a couple of little copper beads. We'll see if that happens. I don't know yet. And we're going to be finishing the necklace with um, links, like a wire wrapped link using silver toned wire in the same tone as what we're doing our weaving. Little copper, copper flower bead caps and labradorite beads uh, joined together with more um, silver, like probably aluminum or stainless steel uh, rings. Probably these ones here that I have off to the side, which are... 20 gauge 1 8 inch rings from the ringlord.com. This is not sponsored. They're just a company I've been, you know, buying stuff from and using their products for over a decade, and I do recommend them. So, now we're going to begin with weaving some chainmail. Uh this video is a project video, so I'm not going to be going too in depth on the half Persian 3 and 1 that we're doing here, but I do have other tutorials that are just about half Persian 3 and 1. I will have them down in the video description and that way if you guys have any questions hopefully I'll be able to help you out with that. What we have going on here and I'm going to zoom in a little bit hopefully that'll be uh, helpful. The first ring we are going to have one open with two closed on it. So what I have set up over here on the side is like 50 rings with one open 
and one closed on it, like how we have here, but the first ring is going to have two closed rings on it. And then I'm going to close it. I would never recommend to someone that their first time weaving this be in um, this small of a ring size, but I am just demonstrating for, because you could just skip this step entirely and carry on with the piece with it being grooved. So you can see how I've stacked them like this, and then I'm going to hook through one and then two, like so, like very blurry. There we go. Um, <laughs> again, uh, oops, well that jumped right off of there, didn't it? Please refer to our tutorial videos on this weave. If you've not woven it before this is this tutorial is definitely this video at least is definitely a intermediate to advanced design um, but I still think stuff like this could be useful for uh, beginners or even if you don't do wire wrapping or chain mail it may just be a fun video to watch so we have that woven and I'm going to very carefully come in here. It can be a bit tricky. Hooking through two and closing it. And I'm going to repeat this until I have enough to do the full perimeter of our stone. So I am going to do that off camera. And for <laughs> the third or fourth time, I am going to recommend if you are new to chainmail, or maybe you're a very experienced wire wrapper, but um, you haven't worked with chainmail before, there there are a lot of tutorials out there, not just by me, about half Persian three in one, and I do hope that they'll be helpful to you. But it was the only way I could think of that I could get this effect that I'd like to go with, like go for um, around the bezel, like or rather kind of that style of a bezel and so we're gonna do that and then I'll meet you guys back here whenever I get that woven so I'm still just weaving along and I had caught myself and was like you know this might be a useful tip to y'all I get questions quite a bit about how do I do you know how do you I how do you know how much you know you need to weave how long do you need to make your bezel? And so much of how I go about that, especially with non-calibrated pieces where, you know, um, sometimes if I'm using a stone, like a blank glass that I'd gotten from like Amazon or something, uh, it'll be 30 by 22 millimeters and be pretty exact, like factory standard to that. And I'll know that in a certain ring size, it takes 24 uh, rings or units like repetitions of the design to go all the way around on pieces like this I have no idea so I just weave and then hold it up and measure it and I'm like okay so this was about half so I think this is going to have taken you know 40 or 50 rings to go around and so I kind of eyeball it and then whenever I feel like I'm getting close I keep testing it and then I just fine tune it. So I'm gonna come back, we'll meet you guys back here whenever we get to the end, and we'll see if we can get it fit perfectly. So I've gotten the bezel to where it's almost complete, and I'm just going to line it up onto the tip of the teardrop. And I've found personally, it's a lot easier easier and more accurate to measure on the curve of a stone as opposed to the point. So it looks like I'm eyeballing it. I'm going to do two more rings, like two more repetitions of the pattern, but I'm still going to add one on, test fit it, and then add another on and test fit it. Because you never know. Like measure thrice. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try to join that. So one ring, I uh, one ring additional. I, I think I'm gonna try to join it. Now the last ring that I do in a design like or in the half Persian three in one, 
I oops I always have the just a single open ring with no closed rings uh, suspended on it so I'm going to grab hold hook through those two and this is if starting the weave isn't tricky enough this is the part where I really lose a lot of folks because they're like that's <laughs> challenging yes it is even after all this time this is not easy for me so I'm just going to hook through that last ring so to demonstrate I'm going to try to get the camera to work with me as much as possible so hooking through Oop. as though a sound effect helps if it helps do it <laughs> so and I'm going to close it and it's not going to look like much right now but it'll get there and so now you can see how these rings are misaligned if I take this ring and kind of nudge it to where it sits above this one is stacked above on this one because you'll notice there's a repetition of pattern going trying so hard to get it to be in focus okay you notice that pattern so we want this ring to follow in line with that pattern because if we turn this there's a pattern happening there as well so i want to hook this ring through just this ring again i recognize this is not a good job of explaining this I highly recommend going to one of our tutorials that's specifically over, this is just one very small portion of this whole video. So I didn't want to take too much time demonstrating this. So I have that ring open and oops, my pliers slipped, which is always nice. And you see I've hooked. This is our open ring here. You can see I've hooked through right there. And I'm going to close it. This is a very tricky size uh, of ring to use. There is actually one ring size smaller than this that I'll weave this pattern in, but that's a bit, a bit of madness, truly. Uh, <laughs> so, okay, we joined it. Let's see if it fits. I'm going to carefully place the tip first, and I like to press my bezel on and over from the front because you can see on the back it has that like corner, whereas on the front it's nice and rounded. Now if you're doing this with a cab that is not grooved, and it fits, y'all, it fits. <laughs> if you were doing this with a cab that is not grooved, I would recommend filling in the back with DevCon 5 Minute Epoxy. This is my favorite one to use for applications like that because it's thick enough and durable enough it gets the job done, but it doesn't always ooze over to the front. And if it does, it's not too rough to clean up. Um, but today we're going to be use, taking advantage of that we have that groove in there. So let me set these rings off to the side so I hopefully don't mess them up. Because if you're watching this video, if you're watching this video and you'd like to see another project, I am working on a companion piece to this of a bracelet, and I'm going to be making the chainmail bezel for that one as well. So be sure to subscribe uh, to our channel if you'd like to see more videos like this one, as well as subscribe to our newsletter on our website, Back to Earth Creations. At that's our email. It's just back to earthcreations.com. But if you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments or you can send us an email at back to earthcreations at yahoo.com. So I'm going to pull um, two full arm spans. So I'm five foot four, so it's about five feet of this 26 gauge silver plated titanium wire from parawire.com. Two full arm spans. So there's one, and then, whoop, and yep, 
two. And I'm going to line up two of the ends. And then I'm going to find the middle. So that's roughly the middle of the wire. And I'm going to kind of make an X in our wire like that. And I'm going to brace with my finger and thumb and then just twist once, twice, thrice, and four times. There's one end. And what's that doing is it's stabilizing our wire to then be nestled into the groove. You know, I'm actually going to do that at the point. It's a lot easier to make it centered up on the point. And now we can take this wire, settle it into the groove of our cab, and I'm trading sides. And I want to honor that center line of the stone. So I'm going to do my first twist. Check and make sure that it's centered along, you know, between, you know, just the center line. And I'm going to grab with my bent nose pliers and I'm going to twist very carefully because if we overdo this, it can bite through the wire. This is a thinner wire. And then we can twist it with our fingers, but I just want enough that there is no wiggle of the stone in that wire. Oof, okay. So that's, this is, uh, everything from here is pure experimentation. So cross your fingers with me, guys. Let's hope this works. Um, I'm going to just pick a random spot along the length of our bezel that we've made. And I'm going to thread these two wires through boop and boop. Oops, that's what I was worried about. With a lot of wire on the table like this, it's easy to get snagged on something. So you can see they're both coming through one of these center spots. And I'm just going to slide that down all the way down to our cab. And that's going to be stabilized to where it'll hold the bezel on at that tip. And then I'm going to try to find where it lines up. It looks like the wires would very happily go through this part of the wire or of the bezel. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to double check it. Make sure it will. Okay. And so I'm going to just thread one wire and then the second wire through. <clears throat> Oops, bumped the tripod. Get used to that. <laughs> we have obviously the most professional quality videos. No, we don't. <laughs> we try though. We do our best. Okay, so that's threaded through. It seems to have... It seems to have worked, y'all. Sorry, I had to durability test it. So it does shift off a little bit, but I think that's going to be just fine because this is going to be attached to some stiff wire. So, y'all, we did the thing. Ooh. Oh, that's, oh, so excited. Okay. Ah. <laughs> Next step. We, oh, I need this. <laughs> Please pardon my excitement if it offends you. You clicked on my face. So, that's how far we've gotten in the design. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> so now we are going to cut three wires and then a fourth. Let's start with the easy one. This fourth wire up here. That it looks like is going to be Mulder then brother. About that long, but I would like to give it maybe an 
inch more be mm, it probably doesn't need an inch like a half an inch more because I'm going to be torching this down now we're just gonna be using a little butane kitchen torch for like I don't know torch and stuff in the kitchen I guess um and melting the ends like heating them up so that they ball up and then I'm going to be hammering it out to get, you know, we probably don't even need, let's see if we can accomplish this with just a hammer. I'm going to challenge myself. I mean, all of this is a challenge, but I'm going to extra challenge myself, <laughs> in which case I'm not going to need that extra length. But if this doesn't work, then we can, um, then we can try balling up the wire with a torch and going from there. Okay. So I have grabbed, there's some moss on it. Um, I've grabbed my steel block that's on a rubber base and a 13 ounce jeweler's hammer that's a dual headed. I'm using the slightly domed chasing head I think it is loud noises okay um and actually before we get straight to hammering we can come through and kind of round this down a little if you have like a burr cup or something of the sort that might be helpful to you but I'm just going to come through and if our wire is shaped like this, like if that's the, the end of our wire, um, or even if we snipped it and it's shaped like that so it has that pinch, I want to come through and shave it down to where it looks like that from all sides. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> And that may actually be easier with if we do a pinched end because I don't know if you can tell but here on this end that's where our wire cutters snipped with like the pinchy side and then this is the end where they snipped with their flush side so I'm going to see how each of those goes because we may have a preference in the future because really this one looks like two of the sides are already where we want them to be And you could use like a Dremel or something for this, but I'm just going to hold that with my pliers or try to. This feels kind of clumsy because I haven't done it before, but it's okay to be new at something. It's okay. It's very okay to be bad at something <laughs> or clumsy or, you know, that's the only way that we get better. Okay, so that's smoothed down. There we go. Effort. Points for effort for sure. <laughs> I'm definitely, I think, going to have to like polish this. I'm scuffing it up so bad, but that's that's fine. This is what we're doing. There we go. Maybe out. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's just as easy without holding it with the pliers. That just made it even clumsier. I thought it might give me a better grip, but that doesn't seem to have been the case. Excellent. Okay, so now I'm going to loud noises. And maybe zooming in a bit. 
I'm gonna hit and then we'll see how it looks. I think that's exactly how I wanted it. Just just dished out a little bit. Okay, time to try that on the other end, and I want to keep the ends like on the same plane. Ah, there we go. Okay. Oh, that one came out pretty nice, actually. Doing the shaping beforehand made me happy. Very good. Okay. Setting that off to the side now. Okay. 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 So there's there's one wire. You know I shouldn't have set off the stuff off to the side because I was just gonna need it again. <laughs> Let me find the middle, which if we zoom out here on the edge of my table, I do have a little ruler notched in. Let me make it equidistant. There we go. So that looks like the middle. You could actually use like an, I don't know, an actual ruler um, and get like good results, but I'm just living my best life. And I'm going to use that part of my pliers and I'm going to push up just a little bit and I'm going to come through on this side, push up just a little bit. And this may be perfect for using my bracelet pliers and giving just a very slight curve. I really like these pliers for whenever I want to be slightly consistent. <laughs> they help me to bend even stiffer wire a little more consistently than what I can accomplish with just my hands. Oh crap, I was supposed to put a bead on that. <sighs> well, maybe we'll change the design. <laughs> ah. Okay, yeah, we'll just change the design. <laughs> Oh no, and you know, and I had the instructions right in front of me, like the, the template. Boo. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> These are the hurdles we run into. You know, and I, I don't even know, I don't know, before I modify the design too much, this could just be considered a prototype piece, because we will see how it plays out in the final assembly. So I'm going to pull off, let's see, 12 inches of this 16 gauge bare copper and then another 12 inches of the 16 gauge bare copper. And then another, mm, let's say, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine inches. No, let's make it ten. Ten inches for our three layers of wire. And I am going to be using just my flat nose pliers for this. I'm going to find about the middle on each of these three wires that we've just cut. And you can see there's a little bit of a natural curve from where it was on the spool. I'm going to be get bending against that curve to about maybe a 30 to 45 degree angle. And I'm gonna try to square that up on both sides, like just making sure that the wire's nice and straight. So there's one. It doesn't have to be perfect. The copper wire from Parawire is very affordable, so I'm not 
seeing a point in being stingy with myself, especially whenever it's an experimentation piece. You really want to give yourself some wiggle room to, uh, you know, experiment freely. And bend. Come through. Because you can kind of see one side's a little bit sharper than the other. But if you come in and... You can really tighten up that bend. And what I do is I just get my flat nose pliers right up into the corn, into the crook of the bend. And then smush it. <laughs> okay, so let's see how these three fit together. I'm pretty pleased with how these three fit together. And coming out of the tip, now we're still going to have all of this wire here, so bear with me. I'm going to be getting tangled on all sorts of stuff. Bend that one off to the side, and bend that one off to the side, and it looks like I can undo once and twice. So that where these 26 gauge wires emerge from the bezel, they're already diverged. And this one's actually going to be the outermost wire. I think that'll be all right. And we'll have this one be the innermost, I think. Will they still fit together nicely? They sure will. Excellent. So now we can position this. I'm actually, let me, I'm just making trouble for myself by having all of these pliers directly where my wire is going to want to travel. So I'm just positioning this. I love that it's protruded a bit. That's just me. If you don't want that, you can spread your wires just a little bit. Yeah, oh, that's even better. And then I'm going to wrap once, twice, thrice, four, and five. And I'm going to try to get just a nice tight coiling around that. There we go. And then I'm going to, for the sake of striving for symmetry, um, I'm going to come around and do that on the same side, or same thing on the other side, rather. Okay. Ooh, it's tricky. Everything wants to wiggle around on me. We've got this. You could tape it, but uh, I don't know where my tape is, so... Hmm. So there's one. And I'm just using my fingernail to cinch down. Oh yeah, that's good. So that actually makes it look like three, doesn't it? It's a bit blurry. Let's see if we can do something about that. Just one, two, three, four, and five rotations. Very cool. Making sure it's still sitting nice. Oh, I love that. Already I love it, you guys. And now I'm going to go like one and that just that makes it look like two beats already around those two and so I'm gonna come up in between these two wires if you can see what's happening there and good news is, is we'll be repeating this a lot, so bear with me. Coming around to the other side. And so I'm going to wrap... There's one over both. There's two over both. Pushing and smushing with my fingers. And then I'm going to bring our weaving wire between these two 16 gauge. Checking the alignment of everything. And now I'm going to put on this third wire, like so. We could have hammered these first. I'm going to try to do that after the fact, and we'll see how it works out. <clears throat> so there's two wraps. 
around both, smushing that with my thumb, and then I'm going to wrap, come down around this third wire. There's one. Oops, oh, they're all tangled. <laughs> so there's, yep, that's one. Okay. And then two. And now I'm going to stitch through. No, I'm not. I'm going to do one. Mm, okay, whenever they're getting all tangled, let's make life a little easier for ourselves. Bend this wire up just a little. Bend this wire up just a little less. And bend this wire down. And now we have a little bit clearer of a position of each of our wires. And you'll notice I did that more towards the end, not up by where we're weaving. I want to keep that nice and straight. So we did one, two. And then I'm going to stitch through just the back side of our half Persian three and one right there. So you see how that's, it's not going through both, which we could do that if we wanted to. I think I just want the back side. That way this will sit a little bit more three dimensionally. It pushes the whole design a little forward. So I've stitched once through there. Mm, that kind of makes a gap, doesn't it? Let's see if that's remedied, remediable, remediable, mm, remediable. Let's see if we can fix it. Um, there's a little bit of a gap, so I am going to. Looks like doing three stitches might be. Oh wow, that's really in there though, isn't it? So let's just get our pliers in there. Oops. Do I have a T pin? Or oh here's a head pin. Made with some lamp work glass on the end. So I'm just trying to get that space opened up a little without messing up the wire. Proving more difficult than I thought it would be, honestly. Rummaging through my bins to see if I have a tool that might prove useful. Here's some pliers, some super fine nose. Okay, here we go. Normally, I don't recommend this oof, because I don't want to be putting stress on our wire, but I also really want this piece to be like just exceptional. So, okay, I have enough that I can get my fingers in there. I'm going to pull that out. So we did two rotations, so I'm going to do a third rotation around. And, you know, let's do a fourth as well, just to really not just use up that wire that I've kind of kinked and overworked a bit, but I really want <clears throat> all of these wires that we're weaving to be very, very snug and tucked in with each other. So hooking back through where we just had. And then sewing this through like that, making sure there's no kinks. It's looking pretty good. And so that makes our fifth stitch and you can see it slid off that's okay we'll keep working with that as we go and if it proves to be a problem um we'll do something different so now we're gonna go one and two Sorry, I don't know how well y'all can hear it, but it sounds like somebody's beating the crap out of their yard with a lawnmower. Um, of course, <laughs> but that's fine. This is life. So 
So there's one and two, like that. And then there's one and two around that 16 gauge. You could use an 18 gauge for this as well. I really like the density of the 16 gauge. I think it's, I think it's just really nice. And then there's, let's see if we can do two on this one. One and two, and then smush that down nice and tight, nice and nice and tight with our fingers. And it looks like I could stitch through this next loop right there. So it looks like we're gonna have a stitch in every single link of this bezel, and I think that's going to be just fine. So let's test it out and see. Because that's going to give our bezel a whole lot of rigidity as well. So you can see, just right through just the back side. Cool. And that's why I should tidy up my workspace. This will, can and will snag everything on your work surface. Normally whenever I'm working and not shooting a tutorial, I'm working in my lap. So the table is reserved for all my tools and stuff, but I'm like kind of hunched over in my chair. Um, so it's one, two, that was three, and there's four and five. Smushing that down. So you can kind of see how that's coming along. And then uh, we just repeat this. There's one and two. Smushing with our fingernails. And then coming in between our core wires. There's one and two. And coming all the way around all three. And then just snagging two, there's one and two. And again, this has kind of wiggled its way off. That's okay. Because worst case scenario, y'all, if this experiment doesn't work out for me, when it's all said and done, I can flip it over and use some of that DevCon five part epoxy or five minute epoxy. It's a two part, not a five. I've never seen a five part epoxy. That's just complicated. Um, or I could use just a touch of E6000 or just whatever strikes my fancy, but I am going to try this without adhesive just to see how it goes. So I'm going to repeat this on both sides all the way up to the top, which just to demonstrate again, I am going to do it one more time on the other side because we might catch a different angle. So there's, again, how they're all kind of crisscrossed. There's no need in that. Bend that one off that way. Bend this one up that way. And now we can very clearly see where our wire's gonna go. So there's two around two, coming around. If this is wire one, two, and three, wires one, two, and three, and we're coming around wires one and two, twice. Smushing that down nice and tight. And then coming around just wire one, that's once and twice. Let's see. That really needs a good smush though, doesn't it? And if you're having difficulty getting your fingernails in there to smush, just use your pliers. I'm not squeezing down on the core wires as much as I'm just squeezing it just enough that it catches the lip that, that lip of those weaving wires that are there. So there's one, two. Now finding the end so that we can stitch through, boop, just right there. Boop, boop, boop. Wiggle, wiggle, so you can see where it's at. And then I'm gonna pull through. Nice and tight. And that counts as our third stitch, and I wanna do five in between each of the designs. So it's four and five. And I'm gonna get in here with my pliers, smoosh it 
not to the core wire, but just smushing it down the length of the core wire because it actually looks like it's a little snagged on the chain mail actually. Sometimes you need to uh, make some space there in between the wire and the chain mail to get it to settle down where you want it to go. Then we'll go around wires one and two twice and then around wires or between one and two to go around two and three. I hope that makes sense. So there's that. And now weaving this way some more. There's one and two. Smush, smush, smush. Squish, squish, squish. There we go. And then just around the one wire. So there's one and two. And it looks like I am going to skip that one. Fortunately, with this being on the back side, you can't really see there in the front, on the front of the chain mail, where those um, connection stitches are. So it really gives us a little bit of leeway to do them where they're needed, as opposed to, well, this is the pattern, so I'll just do one there. Because that way, if, it, if we start varying from the pattern, as we do, <laughs> um, it'll be all right. It's a lot more subtle. It's like a hidden stitch, just there on the back side. So now we can also come in and smush and literally smushing onto the core wires now, just tightening up those weaving that we had done. And smush, 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 smush. There we go. So that's how that's coming along. So now I'm going to continue this up all the way around till we start to get to the top. Whenever I get to the shoulders, I'll start bending it in. I may meet you guys back here for that, but let's continue on. Okay, so I have come through and we're starting to run a little low on our wire right over here. So I'm working on the other side of the pendant coming around now the curved shoulder of the piece and this is experimental and I'm discovering mm, the stone does not stay put quite the way I would have liked so all we need is a little stabilization across um, you know across this back side to keep it from turning and getting shifted about and such and I was looking at the possibility of stabilizing here at the tip where I feel like it is very likely to come kind of undone. And you don't have to use a charm like this or any charm really. You could just use more wire and do like how I'm going to show here shortly. Um, but I found this component that fit just about perfectly there on the back side. And what I'm going to do is using my wire snips. Some sturdy wire snips. I'm going to just snip one side, come around, and snip the other side. And I have a little file here that I'm gonna... Now this is a pewter alloy charm that I got, I'm pretty sure, off of Amazon in like a mixed kit, but if you're worried about it tarnishing, you can go over with some Mod Podge hard coat or some clear resin, nail polish if you're into that. I find the hard coat holds up really, really well. But yeah, just kind of sanding or filing off that point. And now we have a nice round disc that we can use. And after I finish getting kind of to the same equidistant on both sides, we'll start splicing in more wire as well as embedding this onto the back, which I think is just going to be super cool. <laughs> like, I'm so excited about this piece, you guys. Okay, okay. Like, pushing all of that off to the side again. Um, we've wrapped, continuing our design up. I'm going to 
thread through. I need to do, and again, things are getting kind of tangly. That's okay. There's one and two. And I'm going to hook through right here. I'm going to see if zooming in isn't helpful, or see if it is, rather, wiggling so you can see where it's at. Just coming right through there. So that's our third wrap. And four and five. And then I'm going to wrap two around two. There's one and two, and then two around the next two, there's one, and two, and then two around the first two again, one, and two, it's smushing time, smush, 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 so I want very badly for this to all stay nice and put. My tip keeps wanting to slide through the back, so I'm trying to be mindful of that. I don't want this to be shifting the wire off, like distorting the frame. And it is, of course, a tangled mess of wire, but that's fine. <laughs> so we've done those two, and then there's one and two. And you can smush every single, every single stitch if you like. And I like to just curve around a bit at a time as we go. There's one, two. Oh, I went the wrong way on that, didn't I? So there's, yep, two, and then three. And then four. Give it another smush. And now I'm going to stitch through right here. And then coming around. It can, it can feel so tricky to navigate, y'all. Like, if you feel, if you're following along or doing something similar of your own, it can feel very, very tricky. But that's alright. Like, sometimes all the wires just makes my eyes cross. And it's okay to set down a project, go do something else for a while, maybe take a day or two off even. Maybe take a week off, do what you need to do. And then come back to it fresh. And I think you'll surprise yourself. One, two. Oh, that one's all kinds of muddy. So I'm going to smush it. And it looks a lot better. I haven't smushed these in a while. I'm going to come in and just get them nice and flat with my flat nose pliers. You could also use nylon jaw pliers if you have them. And this is coming along really nicely. Now, also, the great thing about doing something like this is you can count nine for symmetry. So I've got one more before I'm the same on both sides. So there's one. And there's two. <laughs> I think I'm going to leave it at two and then do my bind stitch. So there's one, two, coming through right there. That's three, and then we have four and five, and then two around two. It's nothing if not repetitive, y'all. But, man, you can really kind of get into the flow of it and just the zone. There's one, two. And then one. And 
to and we did finish on this side on um, our five stitches so I'm gonna finish it on the five stitches on this side as well so there's one and two I'm going to go three and four. Encourage that around just a little bit further. And then hook through right there. And do that fifth stitch. Foop, like so. Very cool. Very cool indeed. Okay, so now, and you can see our wire is actually pretty close to the same length as each other too. Not too shabby. So now I'm going to pull off another full arm span of the 26 gauge wire. And we can come in and test fit this one more time. Gosh, it fits just perfect. I love it. <laughs> like I couldn't have planned that better about this teardrop. Figure out how you would like your component oriented. And now I am going to remove that for now, but I just want to come through and see if I can on like the back here hook through um, like so looks like we're gonna need a really sharp little hook so I've made our little hook and I'm coming up like three or four loops from the tip There we go. Haha. -ha. And now I can grab the tip of that with my pliers and start pulling through. <laughs> um, before we go too far though, I realize I'm out of frame. We're gonna do that same thing to the other side. We could actually be clever and use a tool. So our round nose pliers to make a nice little hook. And then come down equidistant to the other side to hook around. That was much easier. <laughs> and oops, gripping it and pulling. So now we can try to pull the wires to make them equidistant. I'm using that word a lot. Make them the same length, not equidistant. It's like that sounds like a good word. I keep using this word. I don't think it means what you think it means equilateral or is that just for triangles I don't know <laughs> it's only English it's only my mother tongue you wouldn't expect me to know what the words mean <clears throat> so now we've come just across the tip there and already this is going to serve a great function of keeping everything from shifting around and I'm doing this in lieu of, I don't feel like using the glue. Like, I don't want to. <laughs> and now we can find our component. Put it in there, like that. And if we had a cute little, like, Celtic bead or something that we wanted to use, or maybe a bugle bead, we could put that across the tip. I don't know, just whatever we felt like, I suppose. And I'm going to turn this and I'm gonna, what am I gonna do? Beep boop. Do, 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 do. I want to make this in line with the center line.
Okay, and I'm gonna bend this wire off to the side. It can feel very, gosh, there's like, there is a lot going on in my hand right now, and my brain's trying to keep up, but you don't have to worry about all this other jumble of wire. We're just worrying about this component that fits almost a little too snugly <laughs> to be able to comfortably um, make things. make things work. Okay, so I found the end of my wire and I'm going to hook through the same spot on both sides. So I've looped through and pulled down a bit. So I've looped through right here and pulled down a bit. <clears throat> Now, where do we want this located? Because that is a crucial next step. So I think I'm going to loop through right here. So I'm going to want to put that hook in place again. And I realize I'm probably making things significantly more complicated than they need to be. But isn't that just part of the process? Yes, right there. The hook hooked more than I bargained for. There we go. Oops, loud noises, sorry. Getting my finer tipped pliers. I don't know why I didn't make a bigger hook. <laughs> there we go. Well, I actually snagged it with my fingernail. That worked just fine. And this is putting a lot of stress on my wire, so I'm trying to have it not do that as much. I'm trying to also not snag every other wire in existence along the way. Now I'm not going to pull it down completely tight yet because I do want to be able to do that same thing here on the other side. I'm going to make sure that that hook is in place over here. And comparing, we can kind of count, there's one, two, three, four, it's on the fifth ring from where we went through over here. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, there's the fifth ring. The hook's a little too hooky and I lost my spot. Okay, one, two, three, four, fifth ring. Hook. Oh, that was so easy. <laughs> I love it whenever they go like smoothly. It's so nice. Keeping the wire from snagging other wires is a feat in and of itself. Bring this around. I want that to lay just so. And pull tight and pull tight. Excellent. And then it just nestles in where it goes. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> okay, but that's just one stitch. We get to do that a bunch now. Um, oh boy. I'm actually going to be lazy and jump a bit. I'm going to go all the way up here. And, ooh, maybe if we do a big enough hook. Where's my bigger mandrel pliers? That's it. I've, I'm using almost every single pair of pliers at my desk. <laughs> so I've used the 8 millimeter section to do a loop here. So I almost hate to cover up any part of the stone and I, I paused for a bit to really, you know, think, do I want to, to do this or do I want to use, you know, uh, an epoxy? And I think I'm going to keep going with this, but it's okay to have doubts or second guess yourself or, you know, stop and pause for consideration because you never know what ideas you might come up with in the meantime. So I'm going to try to hook through right there, <clears throat> excuse me, 
excuse me. And just grip. Whoop. Oh, it's getting away from me. There it goes. Just gonna grip and pull. Again, trying to keep this from snagging the whole mess up here. <laughs> and just pulling through. Oh, my snagged on here. There we go. And that seems to be holding pretty well. Because again, this isn't structural so much as it's just a very gentle support. But it's not, you know, this part in particular doesn't have to be super duper ultra mighty, you know, joined together in the crazy most secure way. So that 8mm seemed to work pretty well. So I'm going to do that again on the other side. Put those pliers up there. Where they go? Out of the way. And I'm aiming for, like, right here. So let's see if we can manage that. So I'm going to pop the stone out just a bit to give ourselves some room. Not the stone, but the Celtic Knot charm. And there we are. I'm going to see if I can grab it. Nope. Maybe we can feed it a little bit further. Yes. There we go. Make sure I still have the correct wire in hand. The very impressive putt-putts of a bike dragging by. And there we go. I actually kind of like that I can hide the wire in the uh, curve of the Celtic knot. But now, I mean, that... I mean, if we tug on it a bit, but we haven't secured it much further. So I think that's going to work out, y'all. Okay, let me tidy up again. <laughs> and so from here, we get to proceed a bit. Because again, our wire that's protruding out the top, that this is, these two wires are the bezel wires. So we do at least need to stabilize them. They got a little bit work hardened, a little bit um, tangled and kinked, but I still think they're usable. And I've had folks recommend to me and say that they use successfully in their own work, like a kumahimo bobbin for to put their wire on. I, I've never had much success with that. I find I just work hard and end up work hardening it, hardening it more than maybe what it needed. Um, but again, that's just my experience. So if something works for you, do that. <laughs> you know? Like, there is in no right or wrong way. The wrong way is what doesn't work for you. The right way is what does work for you. So I've done an extra stitch right there, but I think, I think it'll be okay. And I've trimmed it because it, that wire was just so short. We were not going to be able to do too much more with it. So now, I'm going to, using the wire that we've bound on our charm with, making sure the charm is nice and secure, we are fixing to make things even more secure. So there's one, and two. We're going to do another repetition of all this. There's one and two, trying to not tangle too much, but it's difficult be or tricky because as we come around the top, these top wires are going to want to be crossed even more. So what we're going to do is I'm actually just going to embrace the chaos, embrace the disaster. And so now by crossing them fully, They're no longer in each other's way. Hopefully. So where do we leave off? There's one and two. Smush, smush, smush. And then come through right there. There's one. And two. We can still get our bent nose pliers in there and give it a smush. 
and then we'll go once and twice looks like I got off somewhere and I'm kind of weaving in the other direction so I'd like to course correct this is a great opportunity for that so even though it goes against the just looping that I've been doing I'm just going to feed up from behind on which one am I going to do? <clears throat> on this loop here pull it on through You can see that kind of twisted things a little bit right there, but that's okay. We can take our pliers and press that down to where we want it to be. And now we can make a little loop. So that's three, four, and five. Smush and smush. Well, that's looking pretty sharp, I think. Whew. Okay, I'm going to continue then. Just two more repetitions on this side, I think, and three on this side to complete. Well, actually, I would like to demonstrate to you how we kind of splice in the new wire on this side, too. Just in case we missed something or just in case things go a little different than how they did on the first side. Okay. So for this one, yeah, I think that's nicely bound off. We will snip just as close as we can. Using the tip of our bent nose pliers, I'm going to burnish it down and in. Check for pokey bits. There are none to be had. Thank goodness. Last thing you want is something pokey, poking. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to be coming up and through. So there's one and two. And then one and two, smush, 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 and one, and two, smush, 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 and then one, and two. Again, I find myself weaving in kind of the opposite direction of what I was earlier, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just roll with it, I think, this time. You know, see what happens. Maybe, that even though that's my preferred method, it might not be the best for you. So now we feed in through the front to come out here on the back side. You kind of see how that is feeding through. Grab with our pliers if that's easier for you. And you pull a bit so you have enough to get your hand on. So that's our third wire. Yeah, I think I might even like that better. And there's four. And the reason why I think I like this better is as I come around, I have more room to get my finger in there to push the wire into its place. And five. Okay, yes. I'm going to do two more repetitions. Or, or am I? Um, <laughs> let's take another look at our pattern. So let's see. So this outermost wire was going to end in a spiral. I think we may like to start doing that soon. So I'm going to just start kind of encouraging a little bit of a curve on these ones. 
these outermost wires. Something if you really want some help um, making them symmetrical, you could use a ring mandrel. I'm using around a size three to curve it off to the side. Because if you use reference points, like that last weave that we did, that last stitch around, and then the same size mandrel, and it's like, okay, I'm going to bend it around until it touches the pendant. And I'm going to keep my mandrel from exceeding past that line, like, of that wire. That can really help you, just those reference points, can really help you get little sides like that okay so because we may end up snipping this side to match this one and coiling them in I'm gonna put this back over the wire keeps brushing itself on it and I feel very sensitive to that noise right now so this is definitely coming out just a tad bigger than in the design but that is okay um Right on. So then from here, you could do, let me figure out what's what again. I'm gonna zoom out because I feel like I'm all over the place. <clears throat> I'm the kind of person who loves to have a plan so that I can deviate wildly from it. And I'm going to go around both. There's one and two. And then one, two, bring it around to the front and stitch it through. Maybe if I can hold on to it. One, two, stitch it through. For three, maybe. Can we? Yeah, we can. Just kind of run and out, smush it out. <laughs> Hello, tangled mess. We meet again. There we go. That's three. And then four, and then five. And so that's stabilized nicely. Hmm. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out what it is exactly that I want to do. Before proceeding too much further, well, let's do that same thing on the other side then. So there is one, two, and then one. I'm starting to get a little blister right there. Two, three, four, and five. Oh, I didn't stabilize it. Shoot. So I'm back stitching one and two. We'll bring it back to the front for four. And then, oh, that's a pretty good position for stitching. Yeah. Just feeding it right on through. Pull on through, making sure it doesn't kink there at the end, because it's going to want to, especially since we had just done our fifth stitch. And then, fifth stitch. <clears throat> and then we can kind of curve this one up. I 
think I'm going to take a break and see what comes to me. Hey y'all, It for me it's the following day for you, hopefully it's still the same video. Um, so I've been thinking a lot and I kind of started redesigning and tinkering a little bit because this isn't quite coming out like how I thought it would. So this was the original design and what's going on is I wasn't quite able to get this as tight up into the shoulders as I thought I could. Um, Though, so really, let's, I may still be able to do that, because I was messing about with, this is another one of the cabs off of our website, backtruthcreations.com, and I had grooved it, and I, I, I made some chainmail because I wanted to be able to have the option of setting it in that, if maybe that would look a little better, or maybe if I liked the way that looked better, I don't know. I may just turn it into a ring. Cause that might be cool too um but i don't i don't know yet so i've also brought onto my desk some 18 gauge half round in the titanium tone which is the same as the 26 gauges i'm using so let's see okay gotta move the coffee out of the way <laughs> okay because I'd also thought I was kind of sketching out a little bit. Um, so coming through here, if maybe I did like a figure eight weave through there and then some coiling. So like figure eight and then some coiling and still attaching this piece up top, kind of like that. Although I may hammer that out a little bit more. I might be able, I, I don't know. So options <laughs> but again I wanted to say, share the design process with y'all because sometimes this isn't what we planned but this is what is happening so let's roll with it and, and we'll see what happens hmm so I do think I'm going to just continue with a how does it come around one, two, three, four, five. So I'm just going to, yeah, keep shaping this around to the top. I'm going to try to get it to where it's lined up with the center line. Um, and then bend these two up so they're like that. And then if these are the two wires, like the part that's coming up this way is going to have the half round wrapping those two pieces together. And so I'm going to get that far and then see what happens because that part is kind of the same whichever design I end up going with. So we've done the five rotations. So I'm going to loop through, stitch it to our chainmail base which I absolutely love the half Persian 3-in-1 three one, three one because it does give me something that a very nice attachment point for um, binding everything together. Also, something else that would be really cool for this, if you're not into the chain, like if you don't like the way the chain mail looks or you don't like leaving it, is you could use this gallery wire. It's copper gallery wire um, that I get off of Amazon. They do also have this at like Rio Grande and Fire Mountain Gems in a few different places in sterling silver. So if you don't like copper, you can go that route as well. Um, but this stuff is super nice. Um, it's so nice that I've gotten to the point that like, or rather, I think it's so nice. It's affordable enough, but it's one of those things that it's so precious that I never use it because I'm like, oh, I love this stuff. It's like, well, if I loved it so much, I should use it more instead of hoarding it. But that's my own crafter complications to have to work through. Like, do y'all ever do that where it's like, I love this bead so much that I shall never use it in anything. <laughs> and it's like, no, use it. Go ahead. Life's too short. Use the bead. Three. Four. Five. Was that five? Yeah, that was five. And then bringing it around. 
so that hopefully the lighting's a little bit better today as well. But I'm just gonna stitch through that half version three in one again. The wire's starting to get quite overworked, but it's still working, so <laughs> I'm going to keep doing it. And now I think I've got just enough space to do five more before I'm in line with where the wire that's nestled into the groove of the cab protrude, like, exits from the bezel. Yep, because you can see that's where that's coming out. I hesitate to cut my wire just yet because I can always decide to cut it later. But I am going to bring my flat nose pliers in and line them up right there and then do as sharp of a bend as I can manage. And things are probably going to be getting a little crowded in here, but that should be... We'll figure it out. I'm going to actually pull the center wires uh, forward a bit, just so that I can see where I'm going. And I'm going to try to thread this through, yep, right there like that, if you're able to see. So I'm going to wiggle the wire a bit, wiggle, 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 that way you can see. <laughs> So again, this can be kind of tricky, and I honestly don't expect this to be a tutorial that uh, to be followed to the letter, but again, if I could just share the core techniques and the idea of it with y'all, then I, I hope that you'll be able to take it and use it in your own ways to maybe help you with your own design processes. Or if you're, if you're able to follow it to the letter, um, then it came out a lot. It's a much better tutorial than I thought it would be because <laughs> I'm, I'm worried at this point. But I'm also so... Because I, I had considered scrapping the tutorial um, and like finishing the prototype piece and then reshooting it. But this is for one of my beloved nieces and I really wanted to capture the whole experience um, because I'm, I'm feeling very inspired and happy and really enjoying making this so I figure I'll let it be what it is so I've threaded through right there we did an additional five rotations and stitch oh this is such a tangled disaster it's okay <laughs> bring this up and around so then we're gonna go one two three, four, five, and I'm going to find the end of my wire, and then I'm going to stitch through the next, there we go. And so, again, it's it's not necessarily particular about which part of the half version 3-in-1 you're threading through. Um, you may find you have your own preference about those sorts of things. What I think is important is to be consistent about it, because the more consistent you are, the more it's going to look on purpose and intentional. And if that pattern's there, then, you know, even if it's not what you had originally planned, it'll still look on purpose. Okay, so then we're going to bend this down just a little bit more so I can get a nice tight connection with that wire. And then I'm going to do our last two, three, four, five. But yeah, the, uh, the summers when our nieces come and stay with us are the happiest time of my life. So it's really nice to be just experiencing this and getting this to make, or getting to make stuff for them and just enjoying myself. 
there are few things in life better than having a couple of than having some fey children running amok in your house. <laughs> okay, so things are getting crowded. That's okay. I'm going to shift those two center wires out of the way. I'm trying to be careful to not um whoops, stand up on the tripod to not bend them around too much because I don't want things getting work hardened because I need that wire to remain, to keep its integrity, but I also need it to not, to not be in the way. And so I'm gonna, okay, it may, it's gonna be a better idea, I think, for me to bend this the 90 degrees before um, threading it through just because there's too much going on and in the way right now. So I'm gripping firmly and you'll notice, hopefully with my pliers, I don't have my pliers at the exact tip because I don't want to risk my pliers slipping off and pinching the copper because I don't feel like dealing with that right now. Okay, so we bent it before I go any further. Oh, thank goodness it's actually <laughs> centered. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Woo, relief on that one. Okay, so now maybe I can get this through right there. Nope. Sometimes you have to snip off the overused end of your wire, and that's okay. And that kind of gives you a fresh... Yep. Nope. <laughs> no wonder it was so easy. It wasn't threaded through. Okay. Try it one more time. I'm going to put a little bit of that hook in there. And sometimes it's just tricky, you guys. Let's see. I have a tea pen. I'm going to try to make a little bit of space. Using it much in this, using the pen much in the same way that I would use like a leather awl to just widen where I want the wire to go, make sure there are no blockages in the way. Ha! Ah, we got it! Okay, and again, I'm going to kind of. Try to wiggle, 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 so you can see where that wire has come out. Wiggle, 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 okay. And then making sure our wires are all laying like they're happy to be there. Cool, cool, cool. Ooh. Okay, so so that step's done. And now from here, we can kind of look at this. Because I could, I mean, I can't backtrack right now because I've already done all that weaving, but I could continue this design and follow the original. Oops, bumping the tripod. I could follow the original, you know, because that came together. So I would do the half round joined, and then I would bring this wire in a little bit more and then bend it out. But it may still end up looking pretty cool, even if I follow with the original to have this stone here. But I don't know. I mean, the lab is so perfect on its own, I feel, um, that I don't know if I want to complicate things up at the top. So also, where did the stones go? I was going to put one of these. I don't actually know if that's any, if I prefer that any more than the amethyst. You know what we may end up doing is instead of wrapping this in the half round, we may do a twist, do a figure eight weave like do like a, a bale that the twist then just lays over and then make it into a whole necklace. Hmm. I'm gonna get this, 
I'm not going to do the twist. I want there to be more silver. So I'm specifically going to be using this 18 gauge half round titanium tone. Because I think the half round itself gives a lot of really nice texture to, to a piece. So I'm going to bend those ones forward. I'm going to bend those ones back. Just giving myself a little bit more space to exist. Pulling all of my 26 gauge off to my left side, or whichever side for you is a little bit more out of the way. And then I'm going to do my first wrap, making it just as about as tight as I can get by hand. And then I'm going to grab with my pliers and kind of cinch it down a little bit more. And then I'm going to hand wrap some more. But I'm going to actually lift that back up because I want this trimmed to where it will be centered in the back. Like I want the wire terminating on what will be the back side. Just because it, it looks very sharp, I think, to, uh, if you can't see where the ends are. <laughs> okay, coming through, I had a little bit of a twist in my half round, so I'm just smoothing that out. Now I'm going to give this a smush, boop, and then press it down. Make sure it's very nice and positioned, just as good as we can get it. And I'm going to get all my pliers out of the way. And I actually, I'm going to pull it up more towards the end of my working core wires. Because I feel like that gives me a little bit more space to have control and get these coils nice and snug next to each other. And I'm trying to maintain consistent tension. That's something that will come with practice. And if you just place your coils, you don't want them overlapping on each other, but you definitely want them to be like, like really side by side. If you have space in between them, then whenever you smush it, you're not going it, to, it'll be kind of like knuckles. It won't be completely straight and tidy edges. So sometimes it just doesn't work out. Sometimes it does work out. Um, embrace the chaos. But working on your tension can be very helpful with that. And now I'm going to push this down my wire and I'm going to come in and give it some smushes, smush, 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 smush. And then I'm also going to take, and I'm not gripping super hard this way on my pliers. I'm gripping just enough, but then I'm pressing with the sides to kind of compress all of the coiling we've just done. I'm going to move this. I feel like it's messing with the balance on my shading on the camera. So again, there's a little bit trying to make it easy to... You can also just do this. Where... I'm guiding the wire on with my fingers and then just twisting <laughs> the pendant. I wouldn't recommend using like a drill for something like this because I mean, if you've ever tried doing coils and stuff with a drill, there are very specific instances where it's actually beneficial. A lot of the rest of the time you're kind of making more problems for yourself because I mean, you put in all this work, why would you want to put this in a drill and, and have it, uh, you know, tangle up or go get weird and so I don't trust my skills with a drill you may be a completely different story but that's why um, for me I'm always encouraging folks to build up your base technique so that 
yeah, being able to do it with a drill is really nice, but what if you don't have a drill? If you're still able to do it with your hands, then I feel like that's a, a really nice skill to have in your toolbox. There we go. And yeah, I feel like I've gone farther than I should because I don't know... I was planning on just attaching some links. I'm not making like a bale that like folds over. So I may not have actually needed all of that. Hmm. Though I don't know, maybe we'll do a bale that folds over. <laughs> kind of evolving um, what we're doing here. Because we could have this and then weave these ones together just a little bit and have them come in a little bit more and this could still finish in a spiral on the shoulders Okay, let's see. Let's experiment a little with the second grooved stone. So I'm going to continue that twist up just enough because I need something to resist against whenever we put the stone or whenever we put the wire in the groove. Okay, so it joins together pretty, pretty nicely, actually. I like having a little bit of that silver tone in the back glimmering through from the wrapping that we've done. So that's pretty neat. Let's try it with the... chainmail on. So I'm finding both ends of the wire and I'm going to thread in, just picking a random spot since there's no teardrop point that we need to be mindful of. We'll be able to shift this around any way that we need to. I think. <laughs> so this bit is going to be pushed forward a little bit more than like this cap, the top cap would be sitting forward a little bit more, which might give some really cool dimension. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, I think I'm going to do this. And if we hate it, we can just cut it all off, but we'll figure it out. <clears throat> okay, so looking and seeing where the center point is coming through. Okay. Because we can actually count <laughs> before we get the stone in. So I'm coming through right there. So that's one is the one we're coming through. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18, 19, 20, 21. Crap, it's not even. What do I do? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> um, is it 21? So, I'm gonna try something. Big math time. I'm going to place this in, and I'm still going to try to make the twist be happening uh, directly across from where the first twist is, you know, honoring that center line for symmetry's sake. And we've got one. No, that's not centered up at all. Just 
one. And okay, so we've done that twist. So now I'm going to have it split instead of going through one ring. Because really it's subtle enough. We should be able to do it through one ring, right? Like maybe? Yeah, we'll do it through one ring. It's not going to be perfectly centered, but we'll see if that makes, if that's like super noticeable. It's honestly at this point, I don't even know if this is going to, um, it's very fiddly. I'm not going to lie. Very fiddly. Because again, I'm trying to get the wire to go through like the center and wiggle the wire so you can see where it's sitting. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, I'm making a mess. That's okay. So let's see if we can do this without completely buggering up the wire. And now I'm going to try to... Uh, it's particularly difficult whenever it's this small of a, set, a setting because, oh my gosh, it worked <laughs> so far. Um, but whenever it's this small of a setting, um, sometimes it can get picky and finicky. Oh my gosh. Okay. And it actually worked out really well. I think that it's off to one side because then that will allow us to, we could kind of wrap around here and it will still look centered, but our wire. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to embrace it and go with it. I feel very lucky that it worked at all. So <laughs> picking my battles. Twisting that wire and nestling it kind of in between the half round. Speaking of that half round, I hate to do this, but I think I'm going to have to snip it. Maybe unwrap. Now, also, it's very difficult for me personally to salvage half round wire once I've done this, but this is a perfect base for making one of those super cute like bird nest rings. So I'm going to snip right there because it makes it all crinkly and weird and that's exactly what I'm looking for whenever I make wire bird nests. So I want it to be all crinkly and weird and a bit random and chaos mess. Um, because now from here we can take this and we can split these off in either direction and we can use these two wires that originated all the way down here. Like, and it came up around the groove and came up through here around the groove and now we can coil or weave up here to our heart's content. Oh, okay, so now... Let's see, we may want to keep these guys off to the side because we could do a really pretty, like, figure eight weave between these two shoulders. Because mm -hmm. these two wires are still sticking out from right there. They feel like we can, okay, so if you can see where it's protruding from right here, this is the wire that we finished up that coiling with. I'm just going to come around like that, and I'm going to try to start a figure eight weave. So there's one and two. Let's see if zooming in is going to be any use. I'm going to try really hard to stay in frame. Bear with me. 
So one and two, and then coming around. Because if you see, I had exited on this side of the wire, so I'm gonna wrap around on the back side, and I'm gonna go one and two and three, because this wire is traveling farther than this wire, and I want them to keep pace with each other. So it's gonna take a lot smaller of a distance to travel, boop, as opposed to being on that far outer edge. Before I get too much further though, I don't like that wire being on the front. That wire right there. See how it's kind of sitting? So before I get too into it, I'm gonna go ahead and unwind what we just did. And also if the wire is gonna break, now would be the time. So then I'm actually going to start on this wire with one. Oh yeah, that's much better. And two. And then I'm gonna come around to the front and I'm gonna go like one. I think I may want these wires closer to each other when we're starting. Yeah. It's like it'll give us a more dramatic, um, a more dynamic change if we go from narrow to wide. So that's one and two. And then coming around to this side and then going one, two, three. And then coming around and going, that's one and two. Coming to the front, that's one, two, three. Making sure everything's sitting next to each other. Looking good. So then there's one and two. And then one, two, and three. I'm gonna flip this over because that might give you a better look at what we're doing. And I'm also going to start shrinking that away so that we can get a nice wider uh, tapering. Okay, so then we've got, there's one and two. And then we've got one, two, three. And then there's one and two. And then there's one, two, and three. And then one and two. Now, we're going to need to go through and stabilize this onto the front here because I don't want this to be um, worn and like it get caught on the side because it's only held really by those two 26 gauge wires that are surrounding the stone. I think stabilizing the sides like how we did down here is going to be a good idea. So I'm going to come around. We've got one, two, and I'm going to do a stitch. Just boom, through the side there. Just pick whichever loop is closest for you on your project. That's what, that's my thought process is which one is closest. <laughs> so, and then three. So now we have a little secret stitch there. And then one and two. And then one, two, three. I want to do four on that one. And then one and two. And then one two, three, four. It's really eaten up the wire. You can see I've only got maybe nine or ten inches left. 
then one, two, and one, two, three, four, and then one and two, one, two, three, four. In today's episode of Yvonne Can Count, thank you, public education system. Um, well, actually, thank you, mom, for teaching me to count, but. <laughs> Before I go too much farther on this side, I want to start matching on the other because also I'm not entirely certain how we're going to be finishing this off. <laughs> like, uh, so I kind of want to turn it into like an entire like butterfly, but it is supposed to be a wearable necklace and I don't know how my niece feels about wearing an entire giant, um, wire butterfly on her as a necklace um but it might actually end up being a really cool wall hanging so we'll see <laughs> um so i'm gonna start off again same way as we did on the other one with this wire that's exiting on the back i'm gonna come around and go one and two and then I'm going to come across that same figure eight pattern, which we do have a tutorial here on YouTube, a wire wrapping masterclass on the figure eight weaving. And we cover just making a heart, but man, it's a lot of practice. And we show how to splice in new wire and all sorts of troubleshooting and stuff. Like, I, I feel like that's a tutorial I wish I had access to whenever I was learning to wire wrap. So I do hope that it can be helpful to y'all. So if you're having trouble with figure eight wrapping, I really recommend checking that out. As well as there are a lot of really good tutorials here on YouTube, y'all, by all sorts of folks. So, uh, you know, browse around. My teaching style may not be what vibes best with you, and, and that's okay. Like, it's most important to me that you learn what you're seeking to learn. If I'm not the best teacher for you, I hope you find somebody who is so that you can do that thing that you're looking for. So I've got one, two, coming through here. One, two, three, coming around. One, two, one, two, three, coming around one, two, and I'm going to go one, two, and then do that secret stitch. Just right through there. Whichever one's closest. Come on camera, don't fail me now. So that would be our three, and then I'm going to do a four. And I love doing this on the back side of the half version three and one because even if I didn't do the secret stitch on the same spot on both sides, you can't really tell. I mean, you're really going to have to look in there and see that I did this one like one stitch down from the other side. I think personally, I think that's going to be all right. If anybody's losing their mind, you can do it different on yours. <laughs> One, two, three, four, and then one, two, then one, two, three, four, then one, two, checking for symmetry. I am going to go ahead and trim this one to be the same length as on the other side. And also this side has where I snipped using this side of the wire snips. So I want the tips to be the same and even oriented the same. Like the way that the cut was made. I want it to be on the same plane. It still looks bit longer so I'm gonna come in here and there we go you could measure it if you're into that clearly I'm not <laughs> but yeah that's a, the best way of getting things to be symmetrical is to actually measure it but here we are 
two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four. I'm going to do a few more stitches. I'm starting to reel and run really low on wire. Two, one, two, three, four. One more. One, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, so it's looking pretty good. Like, I'm, I'm pretty pleased so far. Um, again, this is nothing like I had originally planned, but that's fine. I'm gonna leave these two short wires, and I think I'm going to pull off just a bit more, like just an arm span really of the 26 gauge because I want to come in on these bits and coil that way I can make spirals that are coiled or spirals that are made out of coiled wire rather because again I wanted the dominant uh, metal tone in this to be silver actually so <laughs> right now it looks very copper heavy, but that's fine. Because I'm also going to be treating this with a liver of sulfur. All the silver and stainless steel, um, or rather the enameled silver and stainless steel that I'm using, won't be affected a bit, but it will bring the copper to a nice different tone. And we will be doing that in this video. Just coming through there, smushing down that little bit off the end. And then just coiling, which it can be tricky sometimes, <laughs> there we go, on how to get your hand in where it needs to be. And I'm not really counting, I'm just making sure my coils are next to each other. And I'm just working here at the end. I can scooch it out a little bit more. That way I can... There we go. And then you can see how we've just pushed that up to where the other coiling left off. Okay. So I want to bring this within about five millimeters to the end of the wire. And then I'm going to snip just as flush as I can use my bent nose pliers to smush that loose end down. No pokey bits. And now we're going to do that same thing on the other side. So again, just binding off like this. Pulling it out just a bit so I can comfortably move my hand. One side's always a little easier than the other, or a little more difficult than the other. And I'm just I'm choosing to just snip that one instead of training the tail down. For no other reason than that's just what I feel like doing. Now whenever I'm coiling, I aim for where my coils are tight side to side as opposed to when there's a little bit of space there because whenever you smush that back down 
sometimes it just doesn't come out quite as tight as what it would. I'm not too worried about it, but that is something that you can troubleshoot, and if you're having problems, um, that might be something to work on. Because nobody else gets to judge if your piece is perfect or not. You're the artist on this one. You're the one who is bringing your vision into reality. So whenever, if you feel like you're being critical of your pieces, I think it's very important to be constructively critical. So instead of being like, oh, well, it's not right. Well, what's not right about it? What would you, you know, what would you have done differently? You know, and really, if you're going to pick it apart, pick it apart in a constructive manner. And, you know, that way you're not tearing yourself down. You're not tearing your work down. You're, you know, learning. You're pinpointing because now if you know well my coiling needs to be more even now you know what you need to practice and work on because otherwise you're just being counterproductive and what's the point in that like really <laughs> okay so now from here i'm going to go ahead and try to make those spirals because if i hate it then now's the like i'd rather deal with that now than later so i'm going to grab our wire kind of as not quite as close to the tip of the wire as I can get but as close to, pretty close to the tip of the pliers because again I don't want my pliers slipping off and pinching the wire because I don't feel like dealing with trying to file that down and stuff but I am going to try to make a little loop and then I'm going to come in cutting at an angle I'm going to take this like that and I'm going to snip. Be very careful that you don't get yourself in the face. But do you see how that gave it like a nice little tip that's kind of curled that I otherwise, I'd have a hard time trying to get that to happen with just my pliers. But now you can bring it in and you have a very nice little spiral going. And I'm going to keep bringing it in just enough until my pliers are starting to get in the way. And then I'm going to coil that in with my hand. And I love it. Okay, perfect. Ah, but that's how I've, I've always admired in other folks' work, how they get such nice, like, tips and stuff. And I think if I had done that and then, like, filed it, perfect. But this is good enough for me right now. So I'm using... About three or four, three millimeters maybe, three or four millimeters up the barrel of my pliers, and then just curling that around nicely. But see how you know it has that little bit of a straight spot. I'm just going to come in at an angle. Oh, and I did that way too far. Well, maybe it'll still work though. As always, practice, 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 practice. So that one's not as perfect, but I'll deal. Maybe if we undo it some and I come closer to the tip of my pliers and try to force it a bit, but usually if it doesn't happen first go, I just let it go. Well, that's just me. And now I'm gonna grip with my fingers and start coiling this in. We're trying to. I think I like that pretty well. So now, an important question to ask myself is, do I want to put a bead right there? And I think I do. Time to go run again. So I have a little tin of more beads over here and I have these really pretty little flashy six millimeter labradorites. I want to zoom back out because it didn't seem as blurry that way. And I'm just going to thread that on. And then I'm going to thread it through the coiling on the spiral.
and then see if I can get it to nestle into the uh, the weaving. We may open it up a little bit just to see. And it may actually be better for me to come in. Oh yeah, from the back side. There we go, because then we'll be able to settle it in nicely. I like that a lot. And now we, I can just keep coiling at least three to five times. Again, trying to make sure that the wire disappears into our previously existing coiling. Which that can take, it can be a little tricky. It may even require some smushing. But to be able to get this to successfully happen, you need um, all of your wire to have traveled in the same direction. So you might need to fiddle with it a bit, but once you get the hang of it. And if your coiling was very tight, you may have complications just getting it to find its fit. We could come in here and try to open things up a little bit. Okay, I think that's going to be as far as I can get it on this side. But I don't know if that's quite good enough. Okay, by uncoiling uh, or unspiraling, the coiled wire a little bit, it loosened it up just enough that I can kind of get those wires to settle in. And it definitely makes a little bit more room for your pliers so that you can kind of encourage things along. And now I'm going to snip it and try to tuck that end. Shoo wee! What an adventure this has been so far and it's not even done yet. <laughs> so now I'm going to just use my fingers to coil that back in. Pretty pleased. I want to make sure that that isn't a pokey outy. No poking. Very good. Okay, so now we get to do that same thing on the other side, and I really hope I have enough wire. I should. Pick in a pretty bead. It's kind of hard to do because all of them are so pretty. Okay. So I'm going to thread on our 6mm Labradorite. I'm going to go ahead and make my life a little bit easier and just go ahead and open that up some. And I think on this one, that's the direction our wire was traveling. Yep. So that would be three. If I can get it to nestle in comfortably. If you don't have enough wire to hold on to, you can use your pliers. Save your fingers the trouble. Four. Mm. 
Maybe I could have done with slightly looser coiling. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Maybe? No. There it goes. Just nestling in. Because you, you gotta give, keep them like very parallel. Boop. Just pops right in like that and then give it a snip. Give it a smush. Smush, smush, smush. And then spiral it back in. Very cool. So from here, what do we want to do? Because I'm thinking I could coil on here and spiral it around. Yep, that's what I'm doing. Okay. So we're going to do more coiling. <laughs> more coiling. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Boop. And snip in the end on this one. I don't know why I was counting. It's just like if I go upstairs, I'm counting how many stairs. It's just what I do. Like it's I'm not good at math or anything, but I just count stuff. <laughs> so I don't know what to make of that, but here we are. Yeah, that's going to look pretty neat, I think. Hopefully. Before I do any kind of shaping with the wire, though, I'm going to leave the core wire straight. I'm just going to do the coiling and I'm going to do it on both sides and make sure that I have the same length of it. So I'm going to use up this bit of wire um, that was left over from coiling these guys. So I have no idea how much this wire was, like the length of it. We're going to see how far it gets me. keeping it smushed and I'm going to try to leave myself about a half inch from the end of our core wire maybe a solid two centimeters we'll see ah drat Okay, so it occurs to me now <laughs> to check. Uh, this wire is significantly shorter than this one. So, crud. I'm going to measure it. Yeah, we are sitting at two and a half inches from here to the tip. So, I'm going to measure on the other side. I've got two and a quarter worth of coiling. So, I'm not going to cut anything yet, but I am going to... Pull off another arm span. And sort everything out of the way. And coil time. smushed and tucked away. Whew. I really hope that she likes how this comes out.
and just trying to keep it consistent. And if you find yourself working in just little increments of like five coils and then smush, that's okay. Like, you'll build up that just practice, 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 you guys, and you'll, you'll get this, you really will. Okay, I'm going to measure. From the edge of the bead gosh the flash on that lab y'all like how I don't even know how to handle this <laughs> um, so we're at from the edge of the bead we're at two and almost a quarter so over here we're at two and a little over a quarter so I'm gonna remove about this much of the coiling Like if you can see how I divided that off. So then I'm just going to snip the value of some nice sharp tipped cutters for sure. Just pull that off. Smoosh that bit down. And I'm going to snip this one. Set that wire off to the side, and now I'm going to snip equidistant from the coiling to the tip on both on the other side. I want those to match. Okay. So now from here, something that we have to keep in mind is whenever you bend your wire, it's going to get a little bit of an expansion, so it's going to push the coil towards the tip. So that's just something to be mindful of. So I'm going to carefully see how much it already shifted. Carefully bringing that around. And I'm going to do that on both sides and I'm using the bead itself as my mandrel to shape and I have to say I'm very pleased <laughs> with that result and I'm not certain yet what I want to do with these ends because part of me wants to bring it down all the way, join it, and then coil back up. Um, we will see. I like how you can make it look like its eyes are turning. <laughs> okay, so now we have up here do we do more spirals? Do I spiral these in that way? Do I do more beads right there? I don't know. Let's start by using up this wire. Um, faux show. It has been along for the ride. I hope it still works. <laughs> now, unfortunately, with this one, I can't just bring it to the end. We're going to be binding it off here. Now, also, I had forgotten, we have this. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to undo a little bit of coiling, <laughs> and I'm just going to straighten that out with my fingernail. I don't want to work hard on it too much. <clears throat> okay, um, how do I want to bind this? Can I fit a bead on there? Like just, I don't know. Oh, my little, my amethyst popped out. We'll have to keep an eye on that. I think once everything is stabilized and I'm not torquing and twisting things around, 
um, it should be okay. Let's see if I am able to put a nice little copper bead. That didn't really sit flat though. Hmm. I also think I have like some little Celtic knot beads. I wonder if that'll still fit on the end. No. Hmm. Alright then. I may be able to do just like a little X. Eh, why not? <laughs> that seems to have worked. Ish. Um. Okay. So really though, what am I doing here? Because I thought I was going to do that as like the top. Hmm. I don't know. I'm reconsidering. I think I may do a loop and then... Okay. Yes. Okay, back to... I realize now that none of that probably made sense, but I am going to show you what I'm going to do. Show me what you got. I'm going to redo the work that I had done and then undone. Um, yay. Do, 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 do. And my battery is fixing to die. So pardon me while I plug in my phone. Super professional quality tutorials. <laughs> okay. Just getting the coils coiled. So I'm going to do this and then I'm going to meet you guys back here when I have both of them coiled to their fullest extent. Okay, so we got both sides coiled. I'm going to measure again just to make sure. I'm all covered in cat hair now. Okay, so it's two and a quarter again. And I'm measuring from where the wire splits right here. About two and a quarter. Cool. Wow. That worked out really well. So I'm going to snip the wire boop, and boop, and I'm going to smoosh the wire boop. and boop around. And what I'm thinking of doing is an itsy bitsy spiral which if you put your fingertips together and you hold your wire, I'll demonstrate on this piece actually, like this, and then turn, it makes a nice little loop. So I'm gonna be doing that. I'm gonna trim this to where it's just a little bit longer. Um, I'm gonna do that on both sides.
So there's that. And now to do it in the other direction, instead of having it facing the piece facing up, I'm going to have it facing down. And there's that. Okay. <clears throat> so now since I don't have half round wire visible from the front I don't think I'm going to be using it to join these two together but I am going to experiment with the possibility of a second spiral around yeah I think I like that and so just encouraging that wire around the perimeter of the first spiral that we made there we go and now I'm going to use our round nose pliers this time I am going as tip close to the tip of the wire and as close to the tip of the pliers as I can. And making a little, just a little curly cue, like that. I'm going to do that on both sides. And I'm using my finger to back it to give me something to resist against. Because otherwise, um, it can the uh, wire can maybe have a tendency to get weird, like grow three dimensionally, maybe. Oh yeah, I love that. Okay, so I am going to join here to here, and I'm going to do that by laying my wire on top and splicing in three to five times one hopefully <laughs> i can do that two mm, these don't look like they're settling in very well so if you're following along you may have wanted to give yourself a little bit of extra room um here off the tip to be able to get things joined together okay so yeah those are starting to settle in nicely there we go then I'm gonna do one more no nope, I don't think it's gonna fit me one more and that's okay just making sure everything's nice and smushed and now I'm going to come in and join this once around both maybe if it's helpful you may be able to actually do a little bit of a split with your fingernail but that doesn't always work for me like it's not always a, an ideal spot for that So you may get it started with the wire and then come in with either a kind of dull pocket knife or your fingernail, just whichever. Oh, it is peeling off my polish, but it's a uh, crafter's manicure for sure. And then we can come in and splice it in on this side. Four so much easier whenever you can kind of force it in like uh and it expands off the end but we can trim that back as necessary okay so i'm gonna snip this and then smush it to where it terminates towards the front because i'd rather it terminate on the front side than on the back where it might uh, irritate the skin and then I'm going to snip there and I'm going to smush 
Oh, hey, pretty kitty. How's it going? Let me clear your spot. You're such a good girl. What am I saying? You're a monster, but I love you. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> She's a sweetie. She's been keeping me company while I work on this. I had to chase everybody else in the house upstairs so the dogs could be, um, they're a bit excitable. Our neighbors are always coming and going. Okay, so I'm gonna just pull a little bit of extra wire here off the end, off the tip. And I'm gonna snip and then smush it back down. That way we can have room to hold our pliers and make it all cute and curly again. Okay, so now on this side, I'm going to try to do that same thing. So splicing the wire in. And this, this has proven to be probably the most difficult time I've ever had trying to do this on this piece, but that's because I think I've been making all of my coils nice and tight. Um, so maybe don't make them as tight as what you think you need to, um, if you're planning on doing a whole lot of this. Oh no, honey. <laughs> there she goes, okay. So I'm gonna try to smush that down. And smush. Smush, smush. Okay. And now getting that curved around a little bit more so we can actually join them together. Making a little bit of space between the wires so that we can actually get it around. And now, one, two, three, four, and five. Perfect. A few more just to grow on. Bringing that wire down to where the ends kind of line up. And I'm going to give it a snip and a smush. Smush, smush. And now from here, oh boy, we are going to curl make some little spirals. So gripping again as close to the tip of the wire and as close to the tip of the pliers as I can. And I'm actually going to leave my pliers in right there about at this angle because I want there to be a space there for whenever we hook our jump ring on. That's the that's going to be the attachment point for that. So strategic spacing, and with the 16 gauge wire, it's definitely sturdy enough that we don't really have to worry about things pulling apart. Though we could come through and do an attachment point there and an attachment point there. That's up to you. I think that this will be okay just as is, but nobody can decide for you. You know that's that's for you to to determine and decide. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. <laughs> I really love this. Oh my goodness. Okay, so the next step, a brief moment of enjoying it before it's like, all right, back to work. Let's go. <laughs> um, we are going to use, my face is covered in camphor and I have no one to blame but myself. Let me go rummage up some bead caps and some wire. I'm going to be using, I think, an 18 gauge if I can fit it, if not, then a 20 gauge wire and some cute little antiqued copper bead caps and some little, like, silver beads maybe, or I don't know. Let me go get the, uh, the rest of the stuff for the piece and we'll be back. So I'm planning out the neckline for this and y'all would be so proud of me. I already made sure all of my beads fit onto the wire. Um, and I have plans to have a six millimeter labradorite bead with one of these bead caps that I get from Fire Mountain Gems 
this is all of the info for that. So if you screenshot it, you can put in that item number. And this is like probably my favorite bead cap on the planet. Um, and I've been hoarding them. Hopefully they still sell them at Fire Mountain Gems. If not, I am going to be devastated. Um, like I'm going to have a downright crafter meltdown. And then some little two millimeter silver beads on either end. And I'm going to zoom in so that you can kind of see how that would look. And that's going to be on a wire wrapped link that I'm then going to join together with um, with more of these same rings that we were using earlier. Um, two for each connection point. And then I'm just going to be closing it with like securing it with um, a lobster claw clasp which I get stainless steel lobster claw, claw clasps off of Amazon. I'm going to try to have links to as much of this stuff down in the video description as possible, but um, bear with me. <laughs> so I'm just placing these out. I plan on having five on each side of the necklace that should come up to, if it's an inch per unit, you know, an inch per, per link once we have the wire wrapping done then that's five inches on each side so that'll give us 10 inches and then i'm going to finish it with extender chain which is just um some chain from like the ringlord.com and though actually oh you know what we're gonna do we're gonna splice in some chain mail on this that way we don't have to use uh any pre-made chain because if we're able to do okay yeah that's what we'll do um let me make sure that i actually have enough set out for and i'm just sharing the setup process with y'all because again i might be doing something that seems obvious to all of you but if there's one person out there who's like huh i never thought of doing it that way and if that's helpful to you then it was worth my time So just pop in those. I really hope I have enough of these because I picked all of them that I had. Okay, I do. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. I just can't drop any. <laughs> so I'm not worried about having the bead caps positioned perfectly. Positioned perfectly. But I am just making sure that everything is kind of laid out. Now the chainmail weave that I'm going to do for along the neckline is a Byzantine weave. And I'll show you a brief tutorial on how to do that here in this video as well. Hybrid pieces like this really are just my favorite. Um, okay, so now I'm going to set this off to the side. And this is a pinch of that same 20 gauge 1 8 inch rings is what we were using for the half Persian 3-in-1. And I'm going to open, ooh, I think 8, maybe? I don't know. It's been a minute. <laughs> Let me figure this out. 1, 2, 3, whoops, 4, 5. Six, seven, and eight, and then I'm going to close six. One, two, three. And since this is directly up against the skin on the very sensitive neck area, um, four, five, and six. 
six, but since it's on a sensitive neck area, I do want to make sure that my closures are just as good as possible. So now I am going to be using some 20 gauge in the same um, titanium tone. And I'm going to thread on, actually, I'm going to cut a segment of one, two, three, four, five, six inches. It's probably more than what I need, but I do like to give myself a little bit of wiggle room. And I'm doing that mostly because I just set this up and I don't want to make a mess <laughs> more than I have to. I'm coming down about two inches from the end of our wire and making, you know, I can come down further than that because I only need this much in the middle. Bend, sharp 90 degree. And I'm going to be using my mandrel pliers because I want all of my loops to be the exact same size. I'm going to be using my um, like four millimeter section to make the loop. And that is because I do want all of my rings to be able to fit very comfortably into that. So we've made our little loop like this. I like to leave this on my mandrel pliers. And then you can either use your fingers or another pair of pliers and just twist this around once, twice, and thrice. And then I'm going to come in and snip that just like that and now I'm going to thread on our small silver you could use any bead combination for this like this is a great opportunity to get very creative and put in your own personal tastes and designs Just like that and now I want to do my bend the same distance that those three coils take up is how far I want right there to be and so another 90 degree bend I'm going to position my pliers bring that around so that our loop looks like this. Put it back on the pliers. And then there's one, two, three. And I'm going to snip. So I gave us a maybe, what, four or five inches more than what I needed. Um, no, not four or five, uh, like three inches more than what we needed. But again, pair wire is affordable enough that you don't have to be stingy. And then I'm positioning it so that our it's all in line nicely. Whoops. Oh, I'm so glad that didn't land in my work. And I like the beads to still be able to move freely because that's going to be very comfortable against your neck as you're wearing it or your skin. And I'm going to do all of our links like that and then I'll meet you right back here to do the chainmail assembly because um, we'll be joining all of these links together as we weave the mail. Okay so this is the chain that we're going to be assembling and it is alternate sections of Byzantine made with that 20 gauge 1 8 inch linked to the wire wrapped links that we had made. And the way that we make the Byzantine, I'm going to call it a unit because it's that segment that goes in between each of the wire wrapped pieces, is we're going to have six closed and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight open. We're going to take one of the open rings and I'm going to put four closed onto it. Now, their uh, Aussie Mail has a lot of really good chainmail tutorials. Um, we have some. There's there's a lot of chainmail tutorials out there on YouTube, you guys, as well at uh, mailartisans.org. There's some really great written tutorials if that works better for you. Um, so 
if you're having a difficult time I'd recommend checking those out so I put all four on there closed it and then put another open ring through <clears throat> all four again and then I'm going to separate it to where it's two links two links and two links just like this I'm going to take one more open ring hook through two just like that and then put the other two closed onto it and then close that open ring and now we're going to thread another open ring through um, <clears throat> through all four again that we just threaded through so I'm gonna hook through one two and then one two and you want to make sure that there's no twists or anything whenever it's all said and done we want it to look like that and so this is where it can start to get tricky and I don't necessarily recommend doing this if if you've never worked with chainmail before like maybe practice a bit before tackling your big main piece but I'm going to take and hold isolating these two rings on the end and I'm going to let them fall off to the sides like that so it's like opening a book and then I'm going to kind of pinch them so that they're sitting like this if the camera will focus so I'm going to do that again so that you can see so we have our chain and I'm just going to fold each of those rings open and around just like that and then I'm going to split these two and I'm going to hook an open ring through those two so it kind of holds it in this tension like that and onto this open ring I'm going to hook one of our wire wrapped links and then I'm going to close it and then I want to double up what we just did. So I've hooked through there and then I'm going to hook through those two and then close. So the whole necklace um, I have set up kind of where it finishes on this Byzantine. So I'm going to close that and this is just how I finish the end of it. Now, I am going to pull out an 18 gauge 3 16 ring from this sampler kit that I have by American Chainmail. I get this on Amazon and I actually just love it just for refilling too um, because it has all of these different sizes and it's just the perfect little accompaniment to uh, completing your wire wrapped or beaded jewelry or getting into chain mail. So this is an 18 gauge 3 16 ring. And this is, I think, a perfect size. I'm just going to open it up and hook it through those last two rings. I think it's the perfect size for attaching our lobster claw clasp to complete the necklace. So I have the 18 gauge 3 16 our lobster claw clasp, and then that is attached with a 18 gauge 1 8 inch to our chain mail. And that's how I do my closure on it. You could use magnetic clasps, you could you can make either a toggle and loop or an S clasp or just whatever your preference is. Uh, our preference here was lobster claw clasp, so it's very secure, it doesn't get too tangled in the hair. <laughs> um, which that can kind of be tricky when it comes to clasps. So I'm going to now repeat a whole bunch of that Byzantine to hopefully 
Um, if you don't feel like going and watching a tutorial of it, hopefully this will be helpful to you, but I do recommend a tutorial just because these are quite small rings. So we have our segment of the 2-2 chain. We're splitting the end, letting them fall down the sides, splitting, like rotating just a bit, and dividing them, and then hooking through just those two. As pretty as it is, I oops, have to move this because the camera's refusing to focus. But yeah, just like that. Then I'm going to attach it to our wire wrap link and close it. I love these surgical st or stainless steel rings. I'm typically pretty sensitive to uh, metals and I'm able to wear them without any problem. Very strong, very affordable, very durable. That's a hard combination to beat. And then I'm going to split these and just keep doing this in <clears throat> repetition until I have used up the whole length <laughs> of the bead links that I have prepared. And I ended up using 10 segments of Byzantine and 10 segments of gemstone. And I found whenever we were selling quite a bit out of our booth, um, necklaces in this style gave me a great way of increasing the quality of our pieces. You know, we weren't having to use pre-mechanized chain, but cutting back on, if I were to do this entirely out of gemstones, that would be pretty expensive. And if I were to do it entirely out of chain mail, it would have been very time expensive. Um, like, well, time intensive rather, but that translates to, you know, having to charge more because, you know, of the time investment which has always been, and I never have a good answer for uh, whenever folks ask, they're like, hey, how do you ch charge for your time? And I'm like, I don't, I don't get paid for my time. Um, <laughs> like, uh, unless we're doing like an auction and something sells really well, uh, I've, I've never really been able to charge accurately for my time. But that's just me. And I would probably be able to do a little bit better if I did work in like precious metals and things like that. But I just really like not having to spend, you know, a couple hundred dollars just on the materials to make a necklace, you know? Oops. I got ahead of myself and joined two p units of Byzantine together. It's time for another link. But you could. You could use sterling silver or gold filled or anything like that. And uh, all of it just boils down to a matter of marketing. For a very long time, Randy and I's core of our business was traveling to conventions and primarily, actually, anime conventions because there were quite so many of them. Like there were, like every city seemed to have its own anime convention going on. So our main demographic were like teenagers and broke college kids or, you know, uh, the rare adult who would rather shop in person than online. And so most of our stuff sold for like 5 to $20. So uh, that really kind of limited how much time I was able to put into a piece. But because of y'all here on YouTube, we're able to completely throw ourselves into a project without having to worry about, you know, are we going to be able to keep our lights on <laughs> whenever it sells? Uh, we just, you know, <laughs> get to make the video and be like, well, it is what it is. We get to just enjoy it. And I think that's such a huge luxury. So thank you guys for that, for enabling my artsy fartsiness. But, um, but yeah, like I was saying, it's either going to be material expensive by using a lot of beads and bead caps and things, or it's going to be time intensive. So either way it translates into, you know, uh, the investment that you've made in the piece. And from there, do I not have enough little, what did I do wrong here? Whoops. I think I messed up. No, 
no okay we're good never mind <laughs> um it's something to consider for your pieces i kind of got derailed and lost that train of thought a while ago i think coming together into the very last segments Splitting these two again, and then splitting them like that, and then hooking through one, two. Now just to troubleshoot, you don't want to hook through those center rings as well. We want to isolate just those two, that ring and that. Again, coming through. If you guys have watched this far into the tutorial, thank you so much for hanging out. I really do hope that this has been helpful to you. Whoops, pliers slip. Um, if you enjoy our free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them, please check out all the links down in the video description below. And all that. Okay, so now I'm going to pick one, two, three, four more of these small rings because now we get to attach the necklace to the pendant. Ooh, I'm excited. <laughs> now, the wearer of this necklace is right-handed, so that determines which side of the necklace I put the clasp on. So again, for your own piece, I recommend, recommend using your own preference. So the side with the clasp, I'm going to put on the right side. And I'm going to hook one ring through our bead link and one ring around our wire wrapping. And then I'm going to close it. And then I'm going to open this one up a little bit more, make it easier to get on. Hook that onto our wire wrapping, and then hook it through right there. There we go. And close it. Oh, didn't mean to water, wander out of frame. And that's how that joins together. Now for on the next side. Opening our ring a little bit further. Hooking onto our bead link, and then hooking onto our wrapping. And then hooking through there Oops. and closing. <clears throat> wow, wow, wow. <laughs> oh, you guys. I am personally very, very pleased. Whoa. <laughs> I, uh, wow. Do I have it right here next to me? I think it's upstairs, but I usually keep an example of my very earliest wire wrapping on hand so that I can... Take a, take a rare moment to actually, you know, pat myself on the back and be like, Hey, Vaughn, you did good. You've grown as an artist. Who'd have thought? <laughs> because now I don't have any. It's upstairs on my nightstand. But, um... I remember whenever I was very first starting out making jewelry looking at other people's beautiful work on DeviantArt and just wishing that, man, I wish I could make stuff like that. Well, past Vaughn, you did it. You're making stuff like that. Good job, girl. <laughs> Your practice is starting to pay off. Oh, so if you're new to wire wrapping or feeling kind of hard on yourself, don't keep at it. 
keep following what brings you joy and you'll get to where you're going. But it's an honor to get to make this piece for my niece. I hope she enjoys it. I hope it holds up well. I'm doing some, some pretty serious experimenting on the poor guinea pig <laughs> um, to see if this um, these groovy cabs hold up like this. But I do imagine, I mean, they should. I even like how it looks on the back, y'all. Like, <laughs> wow. And that's something that was always challenging for me was uh, getting the back of the piece to not look like, um, well, horrible, really. I was trying to think of a nice way of putting it, but just looking a mess. Um, kind of like the back of an embroidery or your first time doing cross stitch when your cat gets hold of it. Uh, but elements that... I really like about this are the continuation of the motif of chainmail throughout. I think that helps tie the whole piece together, if only because of the metal tone. Sometimes whenever you're using a lot of different components and a lot of different metal- Oh, we forgot to oxidize it! Shoot! Okay, um, I'm gonna get a bowl of like hot but not boiling water and I'll be right back. Oh, and a bowl, a bowl of water with baking soda in it to neutralize. Okay, so um, I have some chopsticks here and I'm stirring in a tablespoon of baking soda. This is to neutralize because I'm, I'm not planning on doing any polishing on this one because I really want like a, to really darken down that copper. So in about maybe Two cups of water and then that is my baking soda chopstick and then here I have liver of sulfur gel which is my absolute favorite I used to use the chunks of liver of sulfur never again this stuff is the bomb diggity y'all but it smells like buds so um kind of keep that in mind I don't want to get any on my hands because my hands will be real kind of stinky and so, just a little goes a long way. So you saw just that drop. And you don't want to be, like, deep breathing this in either, y'all. So now we have our pendant. Depending on the gemstones that you use, you may want to um, coat them in, like, latex or something to protect the finish. These guys, the Labradorite and Amethyst, will be just fine. And I'm going to dip this and I'm going to hold it in for a bit. And then bring it out and take a look. It's oxidized a little on that copper. You can always dip it in and leave it for longer. But on this piece, especially since I'm using the enameled silver, I don't want to have to do any polishing. And so, it's starting to get right where I want it to be. I'm just going to kind of swish it around a little bit. I don't know if that actually helps, but I'm impatient. And that's perfect. That's right where I want it. So, blunk, chunk it into the... I leave this out on my porch where nobody can get to it so it can, like, neutralize itself over time. Or you can just dump baking soda right into it. And then I dump it on my uh, compost. Swish, swish, swish in the baking soda water. And now from here... We have, oh yeah, a damp <laughs> piece of jewelry. Now this is probably the laziest way you could use liver of sulfur. Um, if you want a little bit more control, you can actually uh, paint the gel directly on to what you're doing. But this worked just fine for my purposes. 
So there we go. See here on the back side, we have a little bit of a reaction going on with that charm, but that's okay. It just rubs right off. And I'm going to leave this in an open place to uh, dry out, maybe under a fan. Because it has all that surface area of the wire and stuff, so... So just like that, we have a wire wrapped necklace that I think is the best work I've ever done. Um, very, very pleased with it. So yeah, and what's more is it's using groovy cabs, y'all. <laughs> oh, thank you guys again so much for hanging out with me. It was an absolute joy to get to share this project with you. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. I love hearing from you guys. If you were here during the premiere, oh my god, thank you for coming to the premiere. Hey! <laughs> um, I, if you weren't here for the premiere and you would have liked to have been, be sure to sign up for our newsletter because we send out notifications every time we have a new video or live stream or shop update or anything like that. Oh, uh, I'm just gonna, okay, I'm gonna go ogle at this for a bit. Here's another view at the back for if maybe that'll be helpful to you. If you all follow along with any of our tutorials, either this one or any other one, or even if you just use our cabs in your creations and you'd like to share your work with us, tag us on Instagram. It's back to earth creations with underscores where the spaces would have been. Links to that, again, are down in the video description. So, thank you guys again so much for hanging out. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye! <laughs>